right. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Reverend Denise, Reverend Larry. Good job. We, we are awakening, and we are awake, and we are not sleeping through any of this. This is all good. Very, very good. Reverend Denise, would you like to join me for a moment? Because we might just share with the congregation and the people that are still here the words that we uh, as a board have worked on and the definition of the words that we've got. And if you would like to start with some of that, I'll be happy to join you with whatever you'd like. Several uh, months we've gathered together and uh, we were able to decipher what are the core values for this board. And so um, there's eight of them, and we have them all defined, and they're so beautiful. I don't think I'm going to read them all. I think I might pick two or three. So trust is number one, and it says we create a safe place where we, we, we rely upon each other with the assured confidence in the character, ability, strength, and truth of each other. I love that. Oh, I Isn't that beautiful? That was beautiful wording. So we also have integrity. Integrity, we act from a place of wholeness, being impeccable with our words, thoughts, and actions. We keep our agreements, or if that's not possible, we renegotiate. We commit to growing in self-awareness and to upholding accountability. And then one more is um, honesty. We speak with heartfelt intention to communicate with greater connection, understanding, transparency, and clarity while maintaining curiosity and respect for one another. The other ones are wisdom, acceptance, love, truth, transformation. We'll have these available to you on our website, but we just wanted to share them with you. Uh, that this, our leadership is now, you know, committed to these values, uh, and so join us as as we uh, integrate those into the community. Well, and you pick three of the words that go together so nicely, because without truth, integrity, trust, it does not exist. And yeah. being able to pull all of those together is beautiful, and that's what the board has really worked hard on, really, really hard on. And the board is at a place of having total trust with one another. And, it is beautiful, uh, isn't it? Because of the integrity, yes, yeah. and the honesty that we share with yeah. each other. Beautiful. It has been Happy beautiful. to be with you. Oh, it has yeah. been beautiful. Thank you so much for Absolutely. the time we spent with us. Well, I am also happy to let everyone know that we are now in the last phases of the plan of action. The last things that we needed to do was to put together a memorandum for understanding uh, with the preschool so that we have a good working relationship. And as I've told you before, the preschool and the church are getting along so very, very well. We've got such good um, rapport, collaboration, and work, and uh, things are going so nicely. The board has received the memorandum of understanding that was put together between the preschool and the school. And I think we have one person still to go ahead and uh, approve that one, uh, but we should be able to approve that today, and that will go off to UWM tomorrow um, so that we'll be able to get that done. Um, the second thing that I have on my list is with regards to the genogram, and do you have those slides already on for us, Margie? I cannot see them, so I don't know, so just tell me if I get ahead of you or something else. So the genogram, as was presented earlier, and uh, I talked about, and we saw the, the movie of with Dr. Gary and with uh, Reverend Denise, will be June the 6th from 10 to 12, and June the 7th from 1 to 3. That's on a Saturday and a Sunday. And I think we've got a little longer video that we're going to try to show, and I know we had a little bit of some problem with the dot a little bit earlier. It just didn't seem to want to come up. but. Hopefully this one is Hi, perfect. I'm Reverend Denise Schellink. I'm here with Dr. Gary Simmons, and we're here to talk about the genogram activity. Dr. Gary is a renowned peacemaker and spiritual leader uh, throughout the Unity Movement and New Thought. Uh, he is coaching our ministry, Unity Church of Hawaii, through the mission-centric 
uh, modeling. He's also the author of Eye of the Storm book, which we have gone over, and the co-founder of the Q process. So we have integrated the Q here at our ministry with um, over 100 people. So we're here today to invite you to um, a practice called the gene geneogram. And uh, Dr. Gary is going to help lead that. So um, would you please tell us, uh, Dr. Gary, wh what is the geneogram activity? All right. Well, the genogram activity is, is the simple explanation. It's putting the ministry through a cue process. And it is, uh, its takeaway is to have uh, the, the church's cue card, shadow card created so that as we move into our uh, evolutionary process, transitioning out of minister-centric into a mission-centric ministry practice, we need to be able to um, integrate uh, the past so that we, we create not out of uh, what we don't want to experience, but uh, really uh, move forward into creating something that lives in the context of who and what we've come here to be, as opposed to what we're carrying with us as our as our uh, baggage and uh, on the unresolved issues of the past. So we we come together to talk about people's experiences, and we map the uh, unresolved issues that have accumulated over time, so that we can discern what um, uh, what are the dynamics that. Uh, uh, have to be addressed in order for us to move forward into a, uh, a, a desired future. Beautiful. So um, you've been doing this for, for many years, working with a lot of ministries. And um, why is it important uh, for us to go through this? Well, there's really no fixing all of the issues that are associated with the 400-year-old ministry practice that is built around the comings and goings of spiritual leaders what I describe as the minister-centric or the pastor flock model of ministry, what some describe as the plot, pay, pray model of ministry. And so as we, as we evolve into a more resilient uh, ministry practice that can thrive uh, in the disruptions that the, the, that the world is experiencing right now, we need to evolve out of the past. That means that we have to have different stories to tell. Right now, the church is embedded in its, its stories and we, we come together for the genogram activity to map the unresolved issues and to look at how we can co-create together a, a ministry that works for everyone. Beautiful. And I know so many here want that. This has been such a beautiful ministry for 85 years. And uh, we're probably not going to go back and look at, you know, 85 years, but no. the last 20 or so. And just to sort of understand what's happened and, and how to move forward. But... The Q process so helps us become aware of uh, not only who we've come here to be, this beautiful Christ itself, but also our shadow self that sometimes acts out of who we really want to be when we get triggered or when we become defensive or afraid. So, um, and most of us are in that realm. So this is just about bringing awareness to the community then. Right, right. So, so... Everyone has uh, has baggage, has stuff that, that 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 they have to work on in order to welcome into their experience greater experience of wholeness and abundance and vitality. And so the same thing is true for spiritual communities. Over the years, you've accumulated hurts and issues that have inadvertently caused uh, the leadership of the church to deal with uh, drama as opposed to really cultivating um, the systems that move the ministry forward. And so this is not about telling and coming together to talk about what happened per se. It's about everybody coming there to release the baggage that they're carrying uh, with them. And, and so this is not about informing people uh, what happened. It's more, more about releasing uh, one's regrets and uh, be, being a part of the community of owner partners that want to move the ministry forward by releasing the past as opposed to trying to fix what's broken about the church. Beautiful. So it sounds like it's a really healing process that we're about to enter into. It, so. it can. It's, 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 its focus is not uh, healing and reconciliation, however, so there's not a component of mediation. It's really about uh, unlocking the pent-up energy of, of the community that lives in the context of the stories that people have, have and that are carrying with them. And if the ministry is to evolve out of its past, it has to create stories around the fulfillment of its purpose, as opposed to the comings and goings of spiritual leaders. Beautiful. 
Well, I see it as a healing because anytime we can let go of our story and get on with the glory, uh, there's spiritual liberation, there's more joy, there's more harmony, and we can really um, be who we've come here to be. Thank you, Dr. Gary. We look forward to having you uh, at this genogram, which is coming up this coming weekend for uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday 10 to 12 and Sunday 1 to 3. So bless you. See you. See you there. Thanks so much. All right. God bless. Bye bye. Uh, thank you very, very much, Reverend Denise and Dr. Gary. It's really wonderful. Um, it is really important, though, the work that we're going to do with the genogram, because it will allow us to look at some of the things that we have uh, contributed to the difficulties that have been present uh, in the past, look at the shadow parts of our own lives, who we sometimes find ourselves being when we are not being the Christed selves that we are supposed to be. And likewise, taking um, responsibility uh, and taking ownership, because as we start moving uh, into more of what we've used in the past as a mission-centric ministry, as we start moving into a, a degree of responsibility, what we do is we start taking ownership. We are stakeholders. We are owners of this church. We are owners of this ministry. And as we start taking that ownership and taking the responsibility for all of it, we play a greater and greater role in that whole process. So please join us on Saturday and Sunday. Have your voice heard. Make sure that all of the, the memories that you've got to be able and the, and the parts that you've played in all of those uh, is heard so that we can heal. Reverend Denise, another good part we talked about a couple of weeks ago is that Reverend Denise's uh, last Sunday will be at the end of this month, tears and tears, but uh, at the same time, it's been good, and Reverend Denise has decided that she will stay on as a consultant for the church and co-lead with the other ministers in this church. We are so blessed to have Reverend Denise, but also having Reverend Johanna, Reverend Margie, Reverend Levitt, uh, to all co-lead and work with us in the church. So we are certainly blessed beyond measure. I've got another great announcement, and that is that the uh, Endowment Foundation uh, now has board-appointed members. Um, initially, when we first started, we needed to just appoint some uh, by the person that uh, was the uh, originator of the Endowment Foundation. But the board uh, is responsible for every year for electing members. Uh, and so there will be uh, four, five new people that are assigned, uh, are elected. Those included Howard Wig, Jack Randall, Michael Hamnett, Sally Hartman, and myself. And what we will need to do is decide which ones are going to take a one, a two, and a three-year term to be able to make it to where it will rotate in a uh, fashion that we need to have it do. So stay tuned. You will get additional information from that board as well. Um, I think the last thing that I wanted to talk about was with regards to what we're currently doing with getting all of the information to the AG. And I think, Reverend Johanna, did you want to join me with that one? Of course. Dr. Thomas, thank you. So a, a few months back in February, there was a, a question of concern that was raised about where we currently were with the AG, Attorney General letter, the inquiry letter that we received years back. And I mistakenly, after seeing documents, uh, thought that we had been all clear. And I even said, I said, oh yeah, the Attorney General gave us the all clear. However, that's incorrect. Uh, I found out a little bit later that what I was reading was actually a different certificate from Department of Consumer Affairs. So I apologize for that. And because I value honesty, integrity, and ownership, taking ownership and responsibility when we're incorrect, that's why I'm coming to you to say my apologies. However, I think we have some good news regarding that, Dr. Thomas. And we so certainly could you do. allow or yes. could you uh, tell everybody what the good news is Most about certainly. Attorney General Letter? Most certainly. 
Yeah, the Attorney General letter that we had in 2016 had three things that we needed to do. Number one, we needed to prove that we were a charitable solicitation uh, uh, organization. And the reason that the state attorney general was unable to find a bit of that information was that when we applied for it, it was Unity Church of Truth. And so when they went in looking for Unity Church of Hawaii, they didn't find it. And so, yes, in fact, we did apply back in, in 1946 or something like that, if I remember right. And please, I, if, I, if I made a mistake on the, on the date, it wasn't because I'm in, uh, intending to give you wrong information. The second thing that we needed to do was to make sure that we had a process by which information was given to members of the church congregation whenever they wanted it. And with the, the brilliance and the, the work that was done with the bylaws committee, in fact, Appendix A of the bylaws goes through specifically what the different types of information are and how they are to be done. So number two of the requirements that were from the 2016 letter from the Attorney General are done. And then I'm really excited to let everybody know that the 2016 uh, financial review has been completed. I'm sorry, 2015. 2015 financial review has been completed. It has been brought to the board. The board approved it. And so that information will be going on to the website uh, as soon as we are able to get the preschool and uh, parts of the board to sign off on that, which should be sometime this week. We are planning on getting that all done. So we will have complied with, <clears throat> excuse me, we will have complied with all of the 2016 Attorney General recommendations and, and requirements. So that is an extremely uh, important piece. Uh, and I think Debbie's going to come join me for a moment too. Uh, oh, I apologize. There was a, a question that, and I flipped the page over and I missed that one. So sacred safety. There, um, through the wisdom of the board, we have um, a number of committees that have been put together with charters. One of those is the sacred safety committee. Sacred safety committee in their um, charter are to make sure that things are taken care of. The sacred safety committee decided that with reopening uh, with the coronavirus and all, that it was probably another area that was specific enough that they decided to have a subcommittee formed. So there is a subcommittee that has been established, um, and they are in the process of looking at all of the recommendations from the CDC, the NIH, the board, uh, through UWM. Uh, we have got stacks of papers that they are going through trying to figure out what's in the best interest. And with our congregation, being um, wise and seasoned, we are going to allow a little more time to make positive that we don't try to rush into anything. We want to make sure that we are all ready when we do open the doors and no one will be hurt. Because one of the things we certainly don't want to do is to lose anybody that means so much to us. And so thank you for your patience with us. We do have a little bit of time yet, so it probably won't happen till at least the end of the month and maybe sometime in July. And with that, there's one other bit of good information, and that has to do with the Paycheck Protection Plan that the church uh, applied for. And Debbie, if you'll come join me, that would be great. I think everybody knows uh, from last month we talked about the Paycheck Protection Plan and that we had applied for us and for the school to be able to do that. And... Uh, uh, Debbie's going to walk us through where we are with the Paycheck Protection Plan uh, of getting 200 and, is it 214000 something like that, um, $214,000 that have come in to help us with payroll. Yes, that's right. Um, Unity Church of Hawaii and Unity School received $214,965 from the payroll protection plan established through the Small Business Association. 
Thank you very much. Uh, the money will be used to provide payroll for both the school and church, and we are also entitled to you, um, pay for utilities. Uh, we're being very intentional with the funds being paid by this loan, as there is potential for the loan to be forgiven. Um, now, I'll, I'll say a couple words about our, our finances. Um, on our income statement, we're seeing revenues for April. Um, I don't see that. <laughs> um, uh, in the first column, oh, OK, thank you. In the first column, the actuals, uh, the second column shows your budgeted amount, and the third column is the difference, and the fourth column shows the percent of the budget. So um, what you're seeing right now is in April, our donations we're at approximately 55% of the budgeted amount. Um, most of our expenses are close to budget, so the combination of donations that are down 55% minus normal expenses have created a deficit in the month of April of $9,722. However, I think it's also important to note that our donations of $13,666 were a result of credit card and mail-in contributions only. There were no service collections during that month of April. In this time of minimal activity on the campus, uh, we can all be grateful for this month's revenue of $28,000. Thank you very much, everyone. Beautiful, beautiful. Debbie, I know it's a little hard when you don't get to look and see where you are on the slides and it makes it a little more difficult, but you did that wonderfully. Thank you so very much. Um, and it's very important. Um, one of the things that the board decided that they would make sure that we did was to get all of the minutes and the financial statements um, for every month put onto the uh, website. Um, that information has been forwarded from the secretary uh, previous and the secretary of last year so that we could get attached to those all the financial statements that belong to each of those months. It has taken just a little more time than what we had anticipated, but as soon as we are able to get, that, uh, get those um, financial statements applied to the appropriate months, that information will be on the website for you to review. Uh, and I think that we are real close to getting all of that done. Um, Reverend Johanna is diligently trying to make sure that every bit of that gets on the website as well. So hopefully by the middle to the end of this week, you will find what the board promised the last uh, board meeting that we would do. And with that, I think we've covered about everything that we needed to cover for you to do a board update. The last thing that I would like for everybody to do is go to the eCampus, click on the Sunday Connection, and what we will do next is to spend some time with the board uh, as we start talking about Genogram and as we start talking about stakeholder shares in this church. Um, another word that we've kind of thrown around from time to time is mission-centric, but being stakeholders and being responsible individuals to make sure that we are contributing, we are playing our role in keeping this institution alive, vibrant, thriving, and providing the services that we have for 85 years. And that is beautiful. <laughs>